What's quacking guys, it's the Duck Chris, and today I wanted to make a ramble to talk about polling and what's been going on with the game recently in the last couple of years and things I think should change. Recently, I read a Reddit post by the name of Luwu Fui, I guess, um, and it was talking about basically um, the direction that the game's been going and how RuneScapes has been getting easier, uh, mostly due to the way that people vote to make it easier. Um, he mentioned a lot of things about new players coming in who, you know, maybe haven't been playing old school. Maybe they used to play back in the day, um, uh, or maybe they play RS3 or something like that, or maybe they play other games that are more modern and they've been brought into the game and they say, damn, this game's kind of cool, but I wish it was more like this. And so they vote to change things. And like one example that he was saying, uh, in general is that people are advocating for um, content and updates that would be downvoted or laughed at. Like, I guess, you know, there weren't too many core examples there, but like for sure you can think of some like overloads, uh, summoning, dungeoneering. Uh, people even ask for stuff like uh, divination. Like, you know, these skills and, and things that people just want put into the game wholesale just 100%. Uh, it's definitely strange because when old school came around, people were like, well, we want this to be, you know, a hard game. We want it to be a game that um, takes effort and takes time to make your grinds happen. And it seems like a lot of that's been lost. Uh, you know, when uh, I look at surveys of people talking about how long you know they want their grinds to be um, it's pretty strange when people say things like a uh, hundred hours is really long to finish a grind I mean do they remember what runescapes about like you see me doing chambers right now like chambers can take 600 hours to get a twisted bow and no one really thinks that that's too bad like the twisted bow is extremely strong and you know, it can take a hundred hours easily to get your Dexter's Prayer School or first drop, especially if you're on a team and you have lower points. You know, doing maybe a 25, 30 minute raid for like, you know, uh, 100 KC, maybe 200 KC if you go dry, like, that can take a long time. And that's something that we just kind of accept. One of the things that struck me when I was playing RS3 for a while is that people said going 100 hours for a single item was absurd and i was like really because you know the fractured staff of armadil for example it's their best in slot weapon uh, end game weapon that thing is uh, insanely powerful and if you can get it in less than 100 hours uh you know at hard mode care pack which is you know it's a decently hard boss but you don't necessarily need uh, end game gear to kill it if you can get that in less than 100 hours like that's really easy to me and i don't really see why something that's less than 100 hours is really worth doing or that being the uh amount of time that it should take so where is this mindset coming from and as i reset vein cards it's kind of hard to track, but one thing that I think is interesting is to look at the average uh, account and see where the players are right now. For context, a couple years ago, Jagex did a data stream uh, where they showed the average total level of players. And as you can see here, this was in 2020. So this is three years old at this point. I couldn't really find these data uh, most uh, that's publicly that's more up to date uh, even though like that's definitely what I would want to show you but just for context three years ago the average player was 1394 total level and 94 combat now that's you know high enough that you start to think okay so maybe they're starting to get into bossing a little bit they're doing slayer they're training their skills up to the point where they realize, okay, actually this level curve starts to get hard past uh, level 60 or so, level 70, things start to slow down. And you gotta wonder, okay, if that was three years ago, 
Where are those people now? I would definitely bet that 1500 total level at minimum is where the average player is probably something more like 1700 um, obviously as we get new players this number goes down as p existing players level up this number goes up there's a bit of balance but I think it's important to realize that players generally level up faster than Jagex can put up count content so over the last couple years, these players that have been at 1394, let's call them your average players, they're probably at 1700 at least by now. So what does that mean? That means that over half of the players, let's call them 63% of the players, uh, is at 1700 total level and probably over 110 combat. And that means that they're doing end game content. They're starting to raid. They're starting to kill Slayer bosses. They're starting to do the grinds that actually take a long time. And maybe they don't like it. Maybe they do like it. But for those of us who've been at a high total level for a long time, you know, I've been max since 2020. Um, that's not how things, you know, we don't have the same perspective that they do, where they're just getting into this stuff and saying, oh, wow, like, I didn't realize these grinds were actually this long or I didn't sign up for this grind, it's not fun anymore. We've been doing those grinds this whole time. And that's, to us, that's what RuneScape is. That's what old school is. It's these long grinds uh, that are rewarding at the very end and it's a process that you enjoy along the way. So what does that mean for the average player? Well, one thing that I thought to look at also is like what people consider a noob or an average player now. For example, I found this poll on Reddit from one year ago. It's talking about, do they still consider 1500 total level a noob? Now, obviously Reddit, not necessarily uh, the kind of place where they're gonna take everything super seriously. Um, but this poll is pretty clear. In fact, I calculated it's 76% of people saying someone with 1500 total level is still a noob. And that's one year ago. So with that in mind, we can say that it's pretty clear to me that someone with 1500 total level in 2023 is still a noob. The average player has about 1700 total level and the high level players have been at a high total level for a long time and are probably the ones who have more context on what the game is, you know, supposed to be designed around and what fits in the game totally. So where am I going with this? Well, let's get back to polling. In the first days of old school, everyone was a noob, everyone was zero total level, and everyone knew what old school was trying to be. Therefore, when it made came to the polls, it made sense that everyone got to vote. Everyone was there from the start and they know what's going on. And as time goes on, that's more or less true over the years. People have been playing, people have been leveling up, and they still know, okay, this is old school, does it fit with the game as it is right now? But let's take a look back at those current stats. 1500 total level, still noob. Average uh, members player three years ago, 1400 total level, now probably 1700. And we still have newer players coming into the game. The newer players, as we were talking about, they're ones that don't necessarily understand. They're, they don't necessarily have a context for what is this game all about once you get to the higher levels? What are the long grinds actually like? Why is that rewarding and why do we want to design the game around that? They might think, well, I want things to be as easy as they were in the first 50 levels. You know, how come 50, level 50 isn't halfway to 99? You know, that's a common joke on Reddit, but I think there are some people who would actually want that to be the case. They would say, I spent half the time getting to level 50. I want to get to level 99 in the same amount of time. But that's not how this game works. And that's not how this game is supposed to work uh, from the player's perspective either. So I don't think those people deserve to vote. Now, this is a touchy subject and probably controversial for a lot of people. But with all the points that we just came through, I don't see how it's that difficult to understand. You know, some people uh, 
vote exactly the way that the game should be. Um, but you know what? Those people are pretty much myths. I think mostly people vote in their own self-interest. You know, they say, I want this to be easier or more fun or more rewarding because that's what I enjoy. And I want to keep doing that. Or they see something that they don't enjoy and they say, this thing should be better. You know, I wish it was more like X. I wish it was more rewarding. I wish it had a higher experience rate. I wish it was less click intensive. And, you know, that's something that ultimately governs how everyone is going to vote. Um, and I don't really think that that's a bad thing. I don't think that that's evil of people to vote in their own self-interest. Like, oh, at the end of the day, everyone's going to do it. And voting on an opinion that's not your own is just not as motivating. Like, people are more likely just not to vote if it's not their own opinion. But if it's a, an opinion that they feel strongly about, then they're going to vote about that. So it's not that, you know, I really think that people have bad opinions and, and because they have bad opinions, um, they shouldn't vote or they should vote like I vote or whatever. It's just about being educated and being like knowing exactly what the game is about and retaining the sense of identity. Going back to the original Reddit post, what he was saying is... O OSRS is losing its identity and losing its niche by attempting to appeal to people who do not enjoy the game as it exists. Later on in the post, he goes to say that if you don't enjoy a OSRS as it is without any updates, like if it was, if you were playing it right now and you're like, there's no more updates for the next year, can you play it and enjoy it? If you say no, then are you really enjoying the game? Or are you just like hoping that the game gets better because the part that you're currently doing you're not into? OSRS is really a niche game. Like these, this game is one that's very different from your standard MMO because of the long grinds we have and because of the way that um, the gameplay curve leans towards a long-term reward rather than a short-term dopamine hit. Obviously you do get the short-term hits here and there, but as you progress to the long-term game, you have to fall in love with the mechanics and the simple rhythm of doing the gameplay rather than the reward because at the end of the game, like you're not gonna get rewards very often. You're not gonna get a new collection log slot very often once you've already hit over a thousand. Once you have best in slot gear, money's not gonna mean as much to you. You can start going for pets and other untradeable items that take a long time to get, or you start going for challenges that, you know, uh, like the Infernal Cape or the Fang Kit that are one-time uh, grinds, and then once you get it, you just have to be happy with that and not, uh, you know, endlessly seeking that dopamine hit of a challenge completed over and over and over. So, yeah, I think that this is 100% something to address in pulling restriction. So where are we at in pulling restriction? We have had a couple restricted pulls along the way so far, Mostly they've been restricted to PvP and Iron Man. And the core idea with these is that if someone doesn't engage in PvP, if they don't understand PvP, and if they don't like PvP, then why would they be consulted on the shape of the next PvP update? Well, we can 100% apply that to polling in general. If someone doesn't like Old School RuneScape, if they, haven't, if they don't understand Old School RuneScape, and if they haven't spent a lot of time playing it, then why should they be consulted on the shape of the game to come? Now you might say like, oh, well, they're new players, new players are needed to survive. That's true. But ultimately, we want the game to stay the game. We don't want it to change into Fortnite because, yes, if you changed Old School RuneScape into Fortnite, you would get a lot of Fortnite players, but then it wouldn't be Old School RuneScape. And after a while, they would just be like, well... This is still not Fortnite. I'd rather go play Fortnite. Or they'd move on to the next Fortnite. So, you know, kind of a, a silly example. But basically the, the idea is like, yeah, if someone doesn't play or they don't like the game, then that's not who we want shaping the game from years to come. And you can say the same thing about the Iron Man. The Iron Man restriction, you know, when people vote on Iron Man polls or Ultimate Iron Man polls, um... They've restricted it to people who play those types of accounts because, again, you need to understand what the game mode is. You need to care about it in a way that, you know, someone that's spite voting might not care about it. 
and you need to enjoy it because if you don't enjoy Iron Man then you wouldn't play it and maybe you'd just be like well Iron Man would be a lot more fun if I could sell items on the Grand Exchange okay well sure but that's not Iron Man and that's not the fun of Iron Man so why would you form the Iron Man game mode around the ideas of someone who doesn't like the Iron Man game mode because then you would be changing it for the people who do like it and that's another aspect that I think is important to note here is like if you're changing the way that old school is and always has been then you're gonna lose your established players and obviously like you can say okay the established players are addicted to runescape they're not gonna be leaving they're gonna sit here until they get 1400 collection log slots because they have nothing else better to do in the game and nothing else better to do in their lives in general and you know what I don't think that's true but even if it was that doesn't mean that you can just leave them out to dry and be like well we're just gonna totally change the game if you remember that's kind of what happened with runescape 3 they totally changed the game and even the most diehard players, the ones that had max XP, max gear, had played for 10 plus years, ended up leaving eventually. You know, if you look back at RuneScape 3 right now, I think it's a great game, but it's not RuneScape as we remember it, and that's why Old School exists. And if you do the same thing to Old School, where you're like, oh, this new version of Old School RuneScape um, is not the same as what it once was because it's no longer about long grinds it's about you know 20 hour pets and free best in slot items and everything's cheap because the new raid shits it out at like zero invocation level or whatever then people would get pretty tired of the game they'd be like yeah every single person has best gear you know all the pvm is very easy and i think the game would really take a turn for the worse so my examples have been PVM a lot, but skilling is similar. One thing that's changing very soon is forestry. Forestry is an example of how uh, they can buff a skill by totally rewriting the way that it currently exists because the people who are playing the game that are new don't like the way that it currently exists. And, you know, I'm not going to say that woodcutting is the craziest best skill in the world but one thing that it does have is an old school charm and it has nostalgia and it has memories and it has a way that like we know old school trees have worked forever you're like oh boy when the bot comes and chops your yew tree xd but that's not gonna be the same anymore because they thought it would be better if it didn't overall i think that this you know core idea of people not enjoying the game 100% and changing it is something that everyone knows is happening. If you don't think it's really happening, then you're probably one of those people. Everyone that plays that I've talked to has had some event where they say, yeah, I really like this aspect of the game, but then it got removed because people didn't like it or whatever. Um, notably like during the PVM releases there's all sorts of mechanics where people are like you know this mechanic ended up being too hard or um, people didn't think that it was fair and it got removed uh, a key example being Aka butterfly method like obviously like it's still around in some form but it was nerfed because people thought it would be unfair for those people who didn't learn it and that's just kind of one of those things where you're like, well, it's part of the game and it's emergent gameplay and it's something that people have come up with. And why would you take it out except for the idea that, you know, there's going to be some people out here who don't um, don't appreciate that, you know, extra clicking aspect or something like that. And the same with forestry, like they're making AFK woodcutting better. Uh, I mean, I say AFK, but like not tick manipulation and there are people who want this because they don't want to be forced to do tick manipulation even though that's a key part of the game tick manipulation is the best way to speed up your skilling experience rates and this isn't all like this is going quite far in the other direction and it you know while it hasn't hit the mainstream yet there are people who very loudly call for all tick manipulation to be removed not just i don't want to do it myself but no one else should be able to do it they want the game to be changed because they don't like how the game is. 
Same with prayer flicking. People say that one tick flicking should be removed from the game. You know, when they were discussing the Ruinous Powers, there was a significant portion of people who said Ruinous Powers should not be able to be flicked. Now, why is this? Do they want, you know, extremely strong powers that drain your prayer quickly as a balancing act? Uh, I guess, but what they were really saying is, I don't want to have to flick. I want it to be more powerful than current standard prayers without flicking. And that's something that I think is just crazy, because the ability to one-tick flick your prayers to save prayer points is a key part of combat in this game. It's a key part of how the game works as a whole. And it, without that, you're totally changing how every combat encounter works in the game. And, you know, that's not a big change. Or, that's not a small change. So, definitely something to consider in terms of, like, why would we design something around that? But I think it's just those people who are like, you know what? Like, we want the game to be how we want it to be. And fuck what anyone else thinks. Fuck what the game has been so far. Um do what I want because I have voting rights. So yes, I don't think those people should be able to vote. But what does that mean? Like is, are you just restricting it to only max players? No, what I would do overall is I would look at what the current account um, average is. And let's say it's 1700 because that's the number we were using prior. Jagex actually has all this data because they have the um, account survey uh, that they did they do every year they do an annual survey but they haven't published all the data from it but it does say like you know what's your account name what's your total level uh, how many hours you play a week and that sort of thing I would say at least the top half of the game should be able to vote and probably the top two-thirds so I would say like you take the average, you look at the average player distribution and you take the top two thirds and you say, all right, you guys are able to vote. This is pretty generous. And like, obviously we could take it down even further and be like, okay, the top half or the top one quarter is able to vote. Because obviously those are gonna be the people that know the most about the game and they, they have the most experience and they like the game and that sort of thing. But that's all really up for debate. Obviously, I think it should be above 1500 total level because even Reddit agrees with 76% poll that 1500 total level means you're still a noob and you don't know anything about the game. Uh, and that's supported by the 1700 number as well. That's well below the average. And, you know, most most players that actively play the game are going to be above that. So they're going to know what a lot more about what's going on. So let's say 1700. Let's just say... 1700 maybe 1600 total level uh i wouldn't set any active hours requirement i wouldn't set any combat level requirement or or pets or any, anything like activity based requirement or anything like that just 1600 total level to vote and i would want this to roll to uh update continuously you know uh every year they run the survey and every year they can look at the total uh, the average players and just be like all right now you need to be 1700 total to vote just to finish this off uh you know it's not that complicated of an idea it's very controversial because people will be losing their voting rights um the newer players but you know what the newer players like don't even realize you know why a vote is important and i'm sure if you ask them they would change their votes from time to time Anyway, just something to think about. If you think this is a good idea or a bad idea, feel free to leave me a comment, uh, a like, and discuss it. This is something that I've thought of for a long time, but, you know, not really put my thoughts out in that way like this. And it's been nice to do just a classic ramble um, about this sort of thing so, to get that information out there. Anyway, that's about it. Um, think about it. Talk to your Jagex mod friends about it. And uh, until next time, peace out. And thanks for watching.